Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be starting off another video without doing the uh, the big face-to-face -face intro. And again, I apologize for that until I have my health issues uh, resolved. I'm going to be doing videos like I used to do just with the first person perspective here. My hands and the knife. Just to make things a little bit easier. I can edit things. I can kind of stop the camera. If I don't feel so great makes it a little bit easier than uh, having my face on the video. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Best Tech Maruka. And this is actually a knife I've been excited about doing for a while. Actually, I've been excited about doing um, a video on uh, Combo's designs of any of his designs for quite a while because I haven't been able to do one of his knives in many, many years. If you go back way back to about 2015, back to when I did uh, the Bu the Buaya, which was his collaboration with Burr Knives. And I will put a link at the end of this video. I'll try to remember to pop up a little picture here um, of the knife that I'm talking about or a, a screenshot of the review or something. But I'll put a link at the end of the video to that review. It's been so, so long since I've had a chance to talk about one of his great designs. For the past three years, though, he has been doing designs exclusively with Best Tech knives, making production knives. And Best Tech, as you very well know, with their collaborations, especially with Vero Engineering, have been putting out some exceptionally made knives that have just taken the industry by storm. Like, people have been going nuts. There have been rabid fan bases popping up left and right for Best Tech made knives based on certain designs. Again, I go back to Vero, uh, Vero Engineering Designs being one of the big rabid fan bases. So we're going, to, we're going to take a look at one of Greg's designs here. We're going to talk about Greg. We're going to talk about this knife and, uh, and, and why I'm such a fan of both him and Best Tech Knives. And uh, we'll talk about a few of those things here in a moment. Let's start with the packaging, though. Um, one of the things that I really like is their packaging. Because instead of just giving you a cheap paper box, they give you a really, I mean, it's hard to say nice cardboard box, but it's a nice, solid more expensive box than most other companies give you. And honestly, it's kind of a nice thing, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not a big, it's not a big deal for me, the box that things come in, uh, because you are generally going to take this box and you're going to chuck it and it's going to go into a bin, probably in a closet, and you're not going to see it again until you either sell or trade your knife. But it is a big deal when it comes to making a first impression, both for yourself when you first receive your knife and for the person that you sell or trade your knife to in the future, if you're the type of person that likes to buy, sell, and trade often. So it is nice to have that first impression. So a nice box is a cool thing to have, um, which is what I kept trying to tell my first girlfriend in high school, you know, uh, keep that box up. A nice box is a good thing to have. And uh, same thing for your pouch. It's nice to have a nice pouch inside as well. Uh, inside that pouch is going to be a microfiber cleaning cloth. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, it's a nice thing to get. I'll never understand, honestly, why knife companies give you a nice microfiber cleaning cloth. I can't think of any time I've ever used a microfiber cloth on a knife. I mean, maybe on like a Timascus knife, but um, I use these on my eyeglasses and my watches. I don't really ever use them on my knives, but it is a nice thing to have. And then, of course, inside will be your uh, warranty information and all that kind of good stuff and your zippered case, which will also get chucked off to the side because what's really important is what's inside that case. And what's inside that case is one kick-ass, badass design knife. No way around it. Every single knife that Greg has designed for them has been nothing short of badass. So let's get into that. The Maruka, 
I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. I am probably not. Uh, probably not. Here's the deal. Uh, Gregors Grabarski. I'm probably butchering his name as well. It's funny because I've known him. I've always just called him Greg. I've known him for probably seven or eight years. He's from Poland. I'm from America. The American tongue butchers every foreign name. We are awful about that. So, uh, Greg, I apologize that I'm probably butchering, butchering your name. Um, I, I apologize for that and probably butchering the name of your knife. I'm calling it Maruka. It's M-A-R-U-K-K-A. Um, everything that he has, I've ever seen him design is aggressively designed. Um, but it's also intricately detailed. You look at the, just the little milling marks, uh, that are in the small details of the knife. Forget all the big stuff, the little details all throughout this knife and all throughout all of his designs are insane. We'll get to that in a moment. I just want you to soak it in for a second. I want you to soak in the color combo. This beautiful kind of spaceship blue with the golden bronze accents. That's a ballsy color combination, but a combination I love. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite suits um, uh, that I used to wear, the color combination was... Uh, the, the suit was a golden brown and, uh, I would wear like this baby blue shirt with it. It was the sexiest color combination and one that I would have never picked for myself. I had a stylist at the time and, uh, they made the suggestion for me. I'm like, you're out of your mind. Blue and brown do not go together. And oh my God, who wears a brown suit? They're like, no, 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 no. It's not brown. You had to take a look at this. And when I put those two things together, I'm like, okay, all right, now I get it. And it is a striking color combination when it's done right. And the, 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 the tones of that, the particular tones of blue, the particular tones of brown are done exactly right. And on this knife, they most certainly are. Normally, I like a nice, rich royal blue. But this more baby blue, almost going to lavender. And this particular pitch of golden bronze is pitch perfect. Absolutely perfect. But I don't want to get lost in the minutiae just yet because I want to get the specs out of the way first. Greg is a highly talented designer and photographer. Go follow him on Instagram. Let's put his Instagram rod up here. Go look at his photography, man. It is mind-boggling. It is crazy. He was one of the first guys that I ever knew that really mastered Instagram photography. This is back in the days when you could only do uh, square photographs. And everything relied heavily on filters. Because everything that you did, you could only upload your cell phone photographs. And this was back when we all had, what was, what was the, the maximum? Oh, geez, I think the phone of choice back then when Instagram was first coming up back in those days was the iPhone 4, maybe iPhone 5. So you relied heavily on filters. And that man mastered Instagram photography. And he's gotten nothing but better and better and better and better. All right, so your uh, your overall length on this, she's a slender big boy. Did I say she and boy? Yeah, whatever, man. It's, uh, it's 2022. Everything's gender fluid, right? I can say that. She's a long, slender boy. Overall length of 8.66 inches. I'm going to start giving you guys international sizing I may not say all the sizes, but I'm going to start writing the sizes. I'm going to put text on the screen from now on in all my reviews uh, to make me more, I don't know, uh, more of an international sensation. How about that? So your overall length is 8.66 inches, which is around 220 millimeters for those of you across the pond or pretty much everywhere else in the world. Blade length is 3.62 inches. With a 3.65 inch 
cutting edge because you do have a rather pronounced finger choil, which I like. I like that a lot. Blade thickness is 150 thousandths of an inch, so it's thin, but not too precariously thin. But boy, does it taper to a dangerously pointy little tip. That is a scary, sharp tip, ladies and gentlemen. Oh boy, is it ever. And you've got a trailing point design, or as we like to call it, a Persian style. Now, really, a Persian is going to come up. It's going to be more upswept. And this really is almost a straight blade. But it really does have that Persian look, especially the way the frame accents it this way as well. It really has that, that Persian style. It is a titanium frame lock. It is on ceramic bearings. Let's see. Your blade steel is M390. It is a black stone wash finish. I'm going to weigh it here for you in a second. You do have the over travel protection for the uh, frame lock. You do have steel on steel lockup with the steel frame insert, steel lock insert, excuse me. Look at that pivot, will you? Oh, that turbine style pivot. That was what excited me the most about this knife. It's the little details that get me. Look at that. Look at that. How cool is that? That friggin' rocks, man. I really, really dig that. So you got a bit of retro here in this Persian style. And then you've got this futuristic look. Very alien, very sci-fi. And that's something that uh, that Greg really likes. He likes, a, uh, he likes that sci-fi kind of design aesthetic. Look at this bevel right here. And then the bevel is further enhanced with the milled lines. Then you've got the bevel here. More beveling here which makes it very easy to get into the lock. Everything is easily accessed. It's very easy to get in here to the flipper tab and then for your finger to just sweep right out because you've got those two scallops right there. Then there's a place for your thumb to just gently slide into place and then drop into the jimping. I mean, everything is so, just so well thought out. The ergonomics are wonderful. Even though the handle is very slim, it's very thin, and I've got a large hand, it doesn't really feel like it's too small for my hand. It feels really good, as a matter of fact. And it just feels long and wispy, but it doesn't feel delicate. Now, the t I'm, I'll admit, the tip feels like it's a bit delicate. I wouldn't want to tip it, meaning I wouldn't want to drop it on the ground, on the tip. Even though it's M390 and it's pretty tough, I'm still thinking if you dropped it from about waist height, you'd probably chip it or bend it pretty well. But man, that, that is going to go through somebody's gullet right there, man. That's gonna go, that is gonna go right into somebody you don't like. That is gonna be an argument ender right there. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be a dick sergeant over Dick York right there. Yep, yep. That is gonna end the argument, and you're gonna be right. Great action. Nice and smooth, very, very fast. Positive lockup. Even though it's a nice long blade, it feels just fantastic. I really like the overall design. I like the organic flow of the lines from tip to butt all the way around. I like that this comes up. I like how that feels in the hand. It gives you a bit more of a secure feeling in the hand. It keeps it from feeling a little too thin. Because you see how it just kind of locks in right into your hand there. Same right here. Drops right into place right where the end of your, your pinky is going to be. 
I mean, it's just so well thought out, well designed. And I like the fact that even on a titanium frame lock, everything is the same front side, back side. No matter what side you're looking at, it's just as attractive. Pocket clip looks great too. Beautifully sculpted. Matches the design very, very well. Really, really well done. Nicely pocketed, so they only have to use one piece of hardware. The light just dances across the anodizing so well, across all of the multiple surface finishes, because you've got such nice beveling on so many different areas. Look at how many different, it's almost like facets. How many different surfaces you've got on this. Beautiful work on the backspacer as well. I think if I were to have changed, or not changed, but added one thing, I would have liked to have seen an opening for a, uh, a lanyard. Because I think on a knife with a handle this slim, there may be somebody out there that would have appreciated having a lanyard on there tip goes all the way to the end of the handle. They did a great job maximizing the amount of blade they could fit into the handle without overdoing it. You can't possibly hit the tip of the blade anywhere. You can't feel the edge of the blade, obviously, through the uh, back side of the frame. The execution of his very complex design, it was, it was just done perfectly. There's really nothing here that I would change about this. Nice, clean, flat grind with a nice sweeping plunge really complements this very organic flow very well. If it was an angled grind on here with, a, with an angled plunge with a very straight edge, like a 90-degree plunge, it wouldn't have looked good. This very sweeping organic plunge it was perfect. I like the fuller where it just goes off into an open area. This is one of those times where, the, I mean, there's a lot of design work here. It's very, it's a busy design, but it's not over-designed. And that's really hard to do, man. It, it wouldn't have taken very much more before this knife just would have been too busy. Too much going on. And it wouldn't have taken too much for that, that pocket clip to be like kind of phallic shaped. He avoided that. They he dodged that bullet, man. Instead, he made a nicely shaped pocket clip that, that complements the flow of the, uh, the handle really well. No phallus. Really nicely sculpted, beautiful work all the way around. Now, I'm a big sci-fi guy. I like sci-fi shit. So, you know, anything that's kind of spacey, kind of alien-like, kind of spacecraft, I'm going to kind of automatically dig it. So I think that's why I like this design so much. And the fact that it, I, I personally don't think it's overdone. You've got that theme, but I don't feel it's overdone. Four ounces on the nose. Guys, for a knife that's over eight and a half inches in overall length, and it's only four ounces in a titanium frame lock, I think that's fantastic. Utterly fantastic. Let me, let me see if I can find the knife real quick in my collection that's close to the same length. And see what the weight is. Just, just one second. Just anywhere even close. Just going to grab three examples. Very, very quick. All right. My Pohan Lu Hamachi. Seven ounces. These are very, very close in size. Uh, my Red Horse Knife Works Hellraiser P-Series. 
is uh, 0.4 ounces heavier. And you guys all very well know what that is. And uh, 0.8 ounces heavier. And that's very, very close to being the same size. Actually, almost identical. Yeah, man. That's a crazy lightweight knife, in my opinion. Uh, that exoskeleton is really one to open up. All right, so lightweight, good size, kind of does everything. Slick, fast action. Another thing I like about it, because it is so slim, it's going to carry very, very well in the pocket. I'll be honest with you, I haven't been out of the house really. Today was my first day out of the house. Unfortunately, it was for a doctor's appointment. Big shocker. Um, and what I carry today happened to be a brand new custom, a full custom that arrived to me that'll be my next video uh, that just arrived in from the Czech Republic. Um, so I have not had a chance to carry this yet. I just, I haven't unfortunately had the strength to get out of the house in the past uh, three weeks. Um, but I have slipped this into the pocket. Um, the clip retention is great. Everything's great. It felt nice in the pocket because it takes up so little area. But I can't honestly give you a true, honest perspective on how it carries yet. Um, but I will be carrying it. Um, it is something that I do plan on carrying because this is the kind of knife that I really do enjoy. It's different. It's unique. It's a conversation piece. So when I do get to uh, start rejoining, you know, the uh, the real world, this is the kind of thing that I'm going to enjoy carrying and, and just having fun with and and showing off to people and going, hey, man, check out what's in my pocket. Um, if there was anything that I would want to change, I think this color combo, I would have really enjoyed having a satin or vapor blasted or bead blasted uh, blade on this instead of black. Um, just a, just, that's just a personal preference. I have nothing against the black against the blue. I like black against blue. I think it looks good. Um, I've never been really a fan of the size of best text logo and the placement on this blade. I'm not in favor of, I wish it was uh, further back, um, into the plunge or maybe put on the pocket clip or maybe inside of the back spacer. Um, I, I, I'm not a fan of it there. Because this really, it looks so much like a custom knife that that really makes it feel so production. And I know it's a production knife. I know it's only about 275 bucks, So yeah, it's a production knife. But it looks so custom that it would have been so nice if the logo maybe was, I don't know, hidden just a little bit. But I really can't complain. Um, I, I, I truly can't. Best Tech is absolutely knocking it out of the park the past few years. Uh, they've done such a fantastic job. They they should be proud of it. They should have their logo out there. Um, I'm going to assume that because of the sweeping plunge, because it does start off thick and then it drops in thinner, um, that because of the surface and their laser printing it, they probably couldn't do it back here. They had to. This might be the first area of the blade that's truly flat. That may be why they had to laser etch it there instead of back here. And that's just my my personal guess, I could be wrong, because I noticed they did the same thing back here with uh, with Combo's logo right back there. So that's just my educated guess. I could be wrong. But, I mean, that's really it. I really I don't have any complaints about this knife at all. It's wonderfully balanced. It's beautifully made. I can tell that going back and forth on this in renderings, they had to be pulling their hair out trying to figure out how to execute all of these details, all of this machining, and hit a price point. It had to be very, 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 very difficult and still use premium components. So uh, thumbs up to those guys for being able to pull it off. Congratulations to everybody all the way around. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to push it, Greg. Um, I want to review at least one or two more of his designs. I'm a huge fan of his. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him and his work and have for many years. I've considered him a friend over these many years, um, and I'm a big fan of Best Tech's work. 
I do want to get my hands on a couple more of his designs, and I hope to bring them out and share them with you uh, over the next, uh, hopefully over the next year, if it's possible. Um, I, I don't know what the supplies are like and if I'll be able to get my hands on them, uh, but I would like to share some more with you. If you guys want to see any particular version or variation, please leave a comment down below, and I'll be happy to refer him or Best Tech to the comments. And uh, if there's something y'all want to see, and there's a whole bunch of you saying, hey, this one or that one or that one, um, maybe that'll help sway them. Hey, who knows? What the hell? Anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always, I very much appreciate you. Thank you for your support over the years. I have now been doing this for 10 years. Can you even believe that? I've been uploading to this crazy channel for 10 years. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, please do so right down here. Uh, on my Patreon. Uh, now more than ever before, it is so, so important to support the channel as I'm continuing to uh, to hope that it grows and grows and grows, and I'll continue to do more and more uploads as I'm going to be spending more time doing YouTube than knife making, it appears, unfortunately. Um, but lucky for you, because that means I get to share more awesome content with you with more awesome knife makers and more awesome knife brands as well. So thank you guys for the support and I will see you on the next video.